For some reason, I am getting a lot of questions in regards to my wax setup. So I think I'll answer all these questions all at once here. So I have a 60 frame cowan extractor and I manage my wax through a Cooks and Beals heat exchanger and spin float separator. So this system that I have here works without a honey sump. And the idea is to manage the wax within the honey, processing it all together through the spin float. So I have my uncapper drops the wax into this collection sump and I have my extractor, which then has the honey augered back into my collection sump. You can see the auger underneath. So that just pulls the honey down this tube into here. So the honey coming in from the extractor, the honey and wax dropping from the top, and it mixes together. I built this paddle, and this just helps churn the cleaner honey in the bottom with the heavier wax up on top, because the wax will float. So it just helps keep a very consistent mixture throughout the entire slurry. looking at two feet. I'm looking at two feet. I'm looking at roughly two feet, like that's 30, 23 inches. And a four inch auger. Very so. so that paddle system I have in there, that's what I built just to help mix the honey and the wax. And I have it running off the auger drive. So I have a two horsepower motor with a 90 degree gearbox in the bottom set to run the auger. And what I did is I put a sprocket on that shaft and simply put, I put a great big ass sprocket up on top so as that auger churns, this paddle mixer mixes at a slower rate. Let's go around to the other side on that. Works very well. Can maybe slow down those paddles a little bit, but other than that, it does a very good job. And the idea behind that is we need to mix the honey in as consistent of a solution as possible. So I want the wax, the heavier wax layer on top and the lighter wax coming in on the bottom mixed together. So then when it pumps through, then I have my Continental Progressive pump hitched onto it. This is essential. It's kind of like a worm drive pump. It pumps honey and solids, aka wax. So it pumps through and up to my heat exchanger, which is an accumulation of a whole bunch of stainless steel tubes through an oil bath. The more uniform the solution, the easier it goes through all those little <clears throat> tubes without plugging up. So this system is designed to all work together as a single unit. This system, some beekeepers are reaching out to me and asking if it can be used with a different type of spinner and specifically a spinner with a screen. My suggestion is no. Just because of the volume of honey coming through, I think the volume of honey would ultimately plug that screen or overwhelm it. And you'd never be able to get a consistent dry wax 
Yeah, I don't think it would work. This whole system is worked through a spin float, which acts on a continuous flow and acts on separating the wax through densities. We're trying to put through this amount of volume of honey through a screen. I just can't see how that screen wouldn't be continually overloaded with honey as you're trying to, you know, as that screen holds back the wax. Especially when that screen fills up with wax, that honey has no place to go and it'll just, I just can't see that working. So in the case where you have a screen type uh, wax separator, what you need is what I used to have is like a hopper, which collects the wax and the honey from the, uh, the knives. And as that hopper fills up, that gets pumped directly into the screen type uh, wax separator. And almost in a sense running cycles. So when that hopper fills up, run a cycle through, dry out that wax, scrape that wax out, and then run the cycle again. But the honey running from the extractor Typically, as I see it set up in other beekeepers' operations, it's set up with a sump. Some have in-ground sumps like I used to, to collect that volume of wax. Some have on-floor type sumps, a little bit longer. And it basically collects that wax from the extractor through a series of baffles and then pumps a cleaner honey product into the tank. So then you skim the sump of wax, dump it into your hopper, and then it goes into your wax separator. So I'm pretty sure of all the beekeepers reaching out to me, asking me how to set this unit up with a screen type wax separator, this will not work. This has to be set up with a centrifuge. So this system requires a mixing tub. It requires a way to get the honey from the extractor to the tub. It requires a mixing paddle inside to be able to get that solution uh, uniform, right? It requires a progressive honey pump, very important. You can't run it without this, or a type of pump that can pump, you know, chunks of wax without plugging up. It requires a heat exchanger because you need to warm the honey up to be able to run the volume of honey that's needed through the spin float. The warmer the honey, the easier it is to separate the waxes out through density. And you need that spin float. So it all comes together. It's an expensive investment. I would not change it for anything else. It requires, I mean, I'd almost say you need a drum of honey to prime the system. And we're putting through, what, uh, 10, 15, 20 drums a day, depending on the volume. So that works for us, and we're doing it every day, every day. If you're not running through that type of volume, this would be a real tough unit to justify. With volume comes the ability to invest into efficiencies. Those investments into efficiencies is what we can capitalize on as beekeepers. Oh, it's a bit wet. of Bailey's in my coffee this morning. Before you get the wrong idea, I don't get Bailey's in my coffee every morning. My wife gives me a treat on special occasions and maybe those mornings she figures I just need a little kiss on the cheek. This morning, we celebrate 23 years of marriage sitting on the couch, just the two of us early this morning before the kids got up, 
our house is starting to empty actually. So we had one for our kids back from university and the other one sleeping, sleeping in because of partying and all this. <clears throat> but we were sitting in the darkness with the fire going, just the two of us feeling really cozy. 23 years ago, it was minus 40. It's gonna be plus four today. And I was chilled to the bone, not because of the weather, because of sheer fright. And there is a reason why a groom as a best man, uh, just to block the door. This time of year, I guess, not just this time of year, <clears throat> throughout the entire year, everything is very scheduled. It's a pattern. Day in, day out. You'll notice my wintertime videos here, fireplace, walking down the driveway, sipping back some Baileys. Everything seems to repeat itself as it moves forward. YouTube's the same way. YouTube expects you to post on a schedule and a pattern. They have rules for you to follow to be able to increase your engagement. Make more money as they make more money. So then when you fall out of this pattern, out of this routine, they start to punish you for it by pulling back your cash. Right? And they remind you that they pull back your cash. And then they remind you that this is what you should be doing and why you should be doing this. And then they pull back more cash to the point where when I just ignore them long enough and not post as many videos, they kind of go back on track because the engagement's there. And they're still, you know, videos are being watched and they're making money on content, on their, their advertisements. <clears throat> so my uh, revenue starts to come back. So now my revenues come back since I pulled away from YouTube a little bit. Just my act of sense of control of this whole beast. The beast which I do not understand. And the beast which I am using purely as a hobby and not as another arm of business where something else is controlling me. I'm in control here, so that's all there is to it.